Okay, so hello and welcome back to another Unity tutorial. In this one, I'm going to be starting episode one of my FPS tutorial series that I'm going to go on with. Uh, each episode, we're just going to tackle a different um, problem or a different part of an FPS. So obviously, before you can have shooting and all those parts like uh, guns and ammunition and you know all that lot, we need to first of all get through character movement and looking. But that should only take this one video, and then hopefully next time we can start shooting some things. And along this series, I'm obviously going to be um, trying to be as uh, you know best practice as possible um, like rather than being sloppy with the coding and stuff and then if I do any coding that um, people point out you know can be done better or if I realize afterwards I'll obviously cover it in the next video so obviously as we go along this hopefully it'll help you improve your coding knowledge and if you're specifically looking to make an FPS then obviously this is the place for you. I want to start off by thanking Paul Robinson and Phil Bourne for being my uh, donators on Patreon if anyone else wants to help support the link is in the description below. Apart from that, let's get into it. So, got an empty project on, uh, what is it, 2018.3b. Uh, I'm just on the latest version because it has uh, nested prefabs and that's the only reason. You don't have to have this, it'll just make life easier. And there might be some things that I can do easily that you'll have to do, you know, in an awkward, old-fashioned way. I say old-fashioned, I mean old-fashioned for Unity. Um, but anyway, so the problem... Um, well, the first thing we want to start off with is we're going to start with movement. So we want a character, we want a ground. You know, we just want to get it prototyped first before we make anything look nice. Um, and add anything in to interact with. We just want to have, you know, a thing that moves around that we can look around with using our mouse. So, first of all, let's just chuck in a... Well, technically, I shouldn't have an event system, but yeah, it's fine. Um, this prefab I've got, Crosshair, I just made earlier, so I don't waste time later on in the video doing this. You can get your own Crosshair or make it yourself. I'll show you how I did that uh, when we get to it. So, we're going to start off with uh, just a cube, which, which can be our floor, you know, just have a um, prototype. So we can just place it at the center, go to it, and we'll just make it huge. You know, on the X, we'll go for 100 by 100. It's pretty big. We can obviously make it bigger. Um, why not? Just leave it for like, for now. Um, let's go make a material. Uh, just quickly go, you know, ground. Uh, don't like having the shiny ground. Uh, let's just put it on here so we can see what it looks like. Um, I mean, we can obviously cover post-processing and everything later. But our goal right now isn't necessarily to make it look beautiful, we just want to have it working. So let's go. Floor. And um, we'll start off actually with good practice, making folders for all of our um, things, you know. So folder for scenes that are already made, folder for prefabs, put a prefab in there, folder for scripts, and folder for materials. We'll have more folders eventually. And we'll make subfolders when we need to. But for now, this is fine. Uh, now, as you know, if I press play, we've got a main camera in the scene and we go to this. Also, this is beginner friendly, so I will be um, explaining things in depth in the series, um, most things, uh, just so that a new person to coding or Unity or game development or whatever understands what I'm doing. Um, so we're going to create a capsule because it's the most player-like shape. Um, obviously, I could make a player, but that's not for now. Um, I obviously could make a cylinder, but a capsule is uh, a better shape for this. So let's set this to 1. Uh, just put it in the middle, why not? Um, 1.5, so it's on the ground. Whoops, 1.5. And there we go, we're on the ground, you know? Well, I say we, because at the moment, you know, the game doesn't know what this is. It's just a capsule that exists in the scene. Um, you know, the camera looks at it, doesn't do anything. We want to, first of all, be able to move it, and then second of all, be able to, you know, be inside of it as such. So what we're going to do is we're going to write a script on here. Um, now this is just for the um, player controller, it's like the movement controller, so like player movement controller. So we will create that script and obviously we'll put it in the uh, file, uh, sorry the folder before we actually do anything with that. Um, so scripts, make sure it's on the player object. So we'll just call this capsule player. Whoops. Player. Um, like so. Now, the player movement, this is going to take in input, uh, decide what to do with the input, you know, where to move the player, um, when we jump, so on. This is this is for all that. So what do we want? Well, we need to, um, first of all, have some variables at the top so that we can tweak our speed and our, um, you know, jump force and all that lot. Like, whatever we need to be able to tweak. Now, I will end up making a scriptable object for this kind of thing, like for stats and everything, but for now we just want to get it working. So, let's have a, um, what do we want for the player controller? We want to 
have a float for speed and a uh, float for jump force because um, obviously when we jump we want to tweak how high we can jump and so on. It depends on the physics engine, the graph uh, sorry not the graphics, the gravity settings in the game which we can tweak ourselves. Uh, physics is always a bit like awkward to get right. You just have to tweak it yourself. There's no you know rule to make everything right. The best rule to follow I guess is if you want well real life physics then use real life numbers like treat uh, one unit as one meter or one kilogram or so on and just go by that and sh stuff should work fine. Um, so anyway, what do we want? Well, this object, this player controller, you know, it needs to obey gravity. If it went up, well, if we were in play mode and it went up off the ground, we want it to come back down. That means it needs a rigid body. Um, or we could do our own gravity and transform, but that'd be stupid. So we've got rigid body, set the mass, drag, all that lot. Obviously, by this is the default and gravity is checked on. So we will fall. If I dragged it up and press play, we'll fall down. Um, that was just handled for us, you know, we don't have to have code to make us fall when we're not on the ground, so that's all good. Okay, 1.5. So, in this um, script here, we need to store our current rigid body so we can add forces to it. Now, we could write every single time we need to, uh, get component uh, rigid body, but it's nice to cache things, and to cache something, it's not Unity specific, it's just a uh, computer specific, I guess, with data. It's basically, rather than getting something every time you need it, you can just store it for later. Now, obviously, if it's um, storing the reference to something, then it's fine even if the thing updates. But if it's storing an actual value, um, if you don't understand what I'm on about, go back and watch my uh, structs video, because that was explaining the difference between classes and structs. Um, this this uh, series assumes you know some basic coding, but yeah, obviously, you'd have to know Unity. So private void start is just a function that gets called when you you know start the script. Basically, if this script is on an object in the scene, it's as soon as that object is available to be used. Like, as soon as it appears in the scene, basically when you press play, all the starts in the scene happen, unless the uh, object is set to active to false, which I'll go into if you don't know what means. It's so that you can enable and disable things. Generally, that's done a lot more in the UI than actual objects in the world, but you can do it to objects in the world. Now, the void start, what do I want to do? Well, as soon as we start, we want to store our rigid body. So let's make a private rigid body variable called rb because that's just the standard naming everyone does for rigid bodies it's simple um so we'll say rb is equal to get component rigid body and that means that we're, for this rb variable we're going to set it equal to the rigid body component which is the same type of the variable and get components on its own means we're going to get it off the object we're on so the code is on the player here so we're going to get the rigid body on here there it is we're going to have access to that if there was two it would just get the first one i don't know what priority order it has, but you shouldn't have two rigid bodies. I don't know if you can actually have two rigid bodies. No, you can't. That's good then. So yeah, that can only ever get that rigid body. So that's good. Um, and now, once we've got reference to it, we can call functions on the rigid body. So rb dot, and then poof, all of this. Add force. We could you know make it fly up in the air. Whatever. We're gonna do stuff with that. That's for the physics engine. Now, because we're taking an in input, we need to use the update function. So private void update. I'm gonna zoom in a bit. Sorry. Um, so the update function gets called every frame rather than the void start. And what that means is it's good for checking for input because every frame you need to check if you press the button. Uh, some things are a lot simpler to just shove in your update function, you know, do everything every frame so it's all right. Everything every frame, sorry. But you wouldn't want to do that because it's very inefficient. You don't want to run code that you don't need to run. You should only call functions when they need to be called. So there's, there are things that you need to call every frame, you know, checking for input to do movement. But you don't want to have like all your code in the update to set stuff every frame because let's say you are setting UI health every frame. It'd be stupid because you only, your, health's over, your health UI is only ever going to change when you take damage. So you might as well only update it when you take damage, you know? So it's that kind of idea. So we're going to write some functions. So we're going to write a function called jump, um, like so. And we're going to write a function. I'm not going to bother with fall damage right now. So we're in the update, we're just going to check for jump. So let's write a jump function. So down here, we can say private void jump. So here's where we handle the jump code. You could just do it in the update, but it's nicer to have it separate. And then we can just say, OK, so every frame we're checking for jump. And then we look at jump. So it's, it's nicer um, than just having all the code in here and it being hard to follow. Um, so when we uh, jump, we want to say if. We want to do a boolean. We only want to jump if we press the jump button. So if input manager, so sorry, input dot, um, then we can say get key down. So if you look get key, there's three different options. Get key, get key down, and get key up. So get key, 
will basically return true every single frame the button is down for. So if I held down spacebar, it would just keep returning true, 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 true every frame. So that's what that one is. So that's maybe if you're, um, I don't know, pulling a bow back, you want to check every frame, you know, are they still pulling the bow? Is the button still down? Whereas input.getKey um, get key down will only get called on the frame you pressed it. So obviously for jump, you only want to jump when you press jump. Uh, if you if you still have the button down the next frame, you don't want to jump again. You just want to, you know, wait until they release and press it again. You only want to check after every release. And then key up is obviously when you release the button. So um, this is for obviously just doing code when you release the button. So we're going to say get key down. And now we pass in a key code. Uh, we will add a key binding system later on in the game, obviously, so that we can uh, change our own key bindings. But by default, we'll say it's space. So you can say it's keycode.space. Now, if you look here, keycode is an enum. And if you don't know what enums are, then I've got a video on that. But you can also just wait, and I'll explain when we get to them. Uh, we'll make our own enums at some point. Uh, it's basically this enum has every single key in the game. Uh, key in the game, sorry. Like every possible input. Um, I don't know if there's any more than this, but this is basically, you know, alpha. The number key is 1 to 9, or 0 to 9, I guess. Um, and all the other mouse, keyboard buttons, space, whatever. So we're going to use space. So the game now knows every single um, frame if... Uh, whoops, I need to close that off the bracket. So well, if I press jump, if I press the space bar, sorry, we're going to call the code inside this if. So this is where our code goes inside the jump. So if we if we actually do press space bar, then we're going to do something. So what we want to do is we want to say... Um, RB, so our rigid body we got earlier, dot add force, so add force. And then we want to say, well, how much uh, force do we want to add? Well, first of all, it needs a vector free, or if you press up and down arrow, you can see the different possible inputs it takes. So we can either pass in a vector free, which is a type of um, a data type, which has an X, Y, and a Z, and some other, um, there's probably other factors to it, but it's basically just an X, Y, and a Z. Or, we can pass in the actual x, y, and z as three separate values. So what we should do is we should pass in zero, comma, and then, because um, jump only ever goes up, so we don't need to care about the x and z coordinates, we only care about y, so y is up and down. So the y is going to be our jump force. You know, that, that variable we set earlier that we can change in the inspector is how much, is how high we're going to go. And then zero, because we're not going to move in the z or the x-axis. And it asks for a type of force mode, so there's different types. Um, I usually go for impulse for jump, uh, just an instant force using its mass, so it takes the mass into consideration. There are other ones, so continuous force using mass, there's, there's different types, you can look up the documentation, but I, I use impulse for jump in my opinion. So basically what this is going to do is every frame, if we press the space bar like that frame, then we're going to jump. Uh, this can cause problems, obviously, you can just infinitely jump, but we'll, we'll show it in action. Um, so jump force can be 10. I mean, for now, that's just a random number. I don't know how strong that is, so we can just test it. So if I go to this scene, press jump, that's really high, you know? You don't want your player, let's just split this. So you don't want your player um, going that high. So we'll just change it to two. It's not really high enough, is it? Five, I don't know, four maybe? I'd say four's, four looks right. So we'll just go out of it and then set it to four, because if you change something, if you change a value in the inspector during play runtime, uh, it will not save. So just make sure you save it externally. You can always copy the component and paste it on if you get some values you like, but it's just a single, single number, so I know it's four. Now, by the looks of this video, I did a lot of explaining at the start, so we'll probably just get the movement and the um, camera in position, but then I'll do the actual camera movement next video because that's what that can be on. I'll do one of these each day, maybe just like bits and uh, bits and bits. Anyway, so we've got the jumping working, uh, except from we need to check um, whether we're on the ground or not. So the way we check whether we're on the ground, um, we can have a function. So we can say um, private bool is grounded. So we're going to write a function, but instead of private void, where it returns nothing, it's going to return a boolean. Now that means that anything that calls it will get back a boolean, which is true or false. So this function is going to basically tell whatever called it whether we are grounded or if we're not so in the single one line we can say return um well actually it depends how we're going to handle this what we want to do is i did this in, a, in another video before we want to do a raycast now i know there's a lot of technicality in this if you haven't used unity before so if i'm mentioning things you don't understand yet obviously i'll keep covering them over and over again but you might want to look them up so raycasting is basically having an invisible ray that we can't see in the game 
that goes from one place to another and it returns data on whatever it hits. So what we want to do is we want to send a raycast from the center of the player downwards um, and then if um, it hits something we can jump otherwise we can't because that's basically a way of telling hey are we on the ground or are we not. So um, oops sorry I've got league open. So ch -ch -ch code there we go. So the way I did it in my um, the way I did it in my game is I actually do a overlap box which is a bit different I'm not going to go into that I'm just going to do a ray cast so uh, let's just say uh, physics dot ray cast we want to ray cast um, from look at the different options here so I'm going to press down so we can go an origin and a direction and then presumably um, yeah the distance so we're going to go for this one so we need to pass in a vector free so it's a an XYZ position well we can just go for our own position so transform dot position next we need a direction transform dot down uh, sorry uh, vector free dot down vector free dot down comma and then there's different options we've got a max distance here so we can just say the max distance is um, well we want to go for the players um, height plus a little bit um, so we could say um, Ooh, what I could do is I could actually debug.drawRay uh, transform.position vector3.down uh, color uh, color dot um, blue I don't know and where's the uh, okay and then we can times this by so let's just show you this, it'll be easier to show you. Uh, serialized field, private ray uh, float, ray cast distance. Okay, so I'm going to multiply, I'll, I'll explain this right now. So ray cast distance, done. Vector free down, ray cast distance. Yeah, so basically this is just going to draw the ray that we're trying to check for, but it's going to draw it in the scene view so we can see it um, when we're debugging. That's why it's a debug.draw ray. And then here is our actual um, Boolean. So it will return true if we hit something and false if we don't. So um, what we can actually do is we can just say um, return that uh, two thingies at the end. It says we don't actually need these because we don't. Um, we can just return that. Okay. So this line isn't necessary, it's just to show you. And this raycast distance is basically just how far it's gonna go from um, how far it's gonna go from where it starts to where it ends. So if I press play, um, wait, do I even call this, sorry? I should probably call this. Um, so before we actually add the force when we press spacebar, we need to say if is grounded. And that's because, well, if you said if and then a Boolean, it'll happen if it's true and it won't happen if it's false. So um, this is our function. If it returns true, we'll do the jump, and if it returns false, we won't. So obviously the whole point in the function is to check if we're on the ground or not. Um, how's the video going? 18 minutes. All right, so yeah, we should be able to just end this and then do some quick movement. So if I go into the scene view now and I jump, it won't let me jump. That's because we're not grounded. Now if I set the raycast distance to one, you see when I jump, you can actually see a blue line there. It's quite hard to see, but you can see a blue line, okay? Now, if I go, like, below the ground, for example, or into the ground, let me just get to the right, you'll see the actual um, raycast is, uh, if I put it to, like, 0 0.9, it's not going to work because the raycast doesn't get to below the player. If I go to 0 0.999, it still won't get there. And no matter how many nines I add, it technically shouldn't get there. But if I, as soon as I go to one, it gets there because that's exactly perfect to where it should be. Now, in reality, you do want it to be a slight a bit higher than that because if you're on um, uneven terrain, it won't work. It won't let you jump sometimes. So you might want to go for 1.1. So even if I go like this, this uh, checks a bit below the ground. But as you see, I'm spamming jump and it only lets me jump when I land back on the ground. Uh, oh, that reminds me. Uh, one thing I forgot to do. Let me remember. So I got 1.1. So. I take it out of play mode, put it into 1.1. 1 
make sure on your player that the um, rigid body has constraints for the um, rotation. We don't really, well as you see, we don't want to rotate on the um, Z. We don't want to rotate on the X. We do want to rotate on the Y. So we can just put um, freeze rotation on the X and the Z, like so, so that we can't fall over basically. Uh, we can't just topple over because we're a capsule. No, oh, we're in the game, yeah. So there you go. So jumping works now. We can only jump when we are uh, actually on the ground. And it works. So now all we have to do is uh, we could manually um, we could manually like just set this as a variable but um, let's let's just uh, keep it public in case our character becomes a different height. So jump um, yeah jump ray cast difference uh, distance. By the way I do know there is a way you can just automatically get the uh, value and then add a little bit by um, getting the box collider this uh, length or you could even go f and halving it or you could go for the scale but the scale depends on the mesh we just have a good like um, kind of like normalized mesh but anyway we'll get rid of the debug we don't need that so whenever we try jumping we'll press spacebar can we are we on the ground if so jump okay now we'll quickly add the actual movement so uh, we want to add a fixed update now a fixed update works just like an update but it happens um, every fi physics step rather than every frame it's so that for example you, if you have a higher if you have a higher frame rate you don't want to be able to move faster you don't want to like move further just because you have a better fps this kind of balances it out so regardless because this gets called every frame so it gets depending on your frame rate right but this uh is not dependent on frame rate which is good so we're going to say uh we don't want to say if we just want to say um we want to write a function called move and then down here, we'll say private void move. Uh, we don't want that move though. Okay, we want to say float. Um, so we're going to have a h axis because it's a horizontal axis. Is input dot get raw axis or get axis raw? Sorry, horizontal. And that needs to be a string. Uh, that's set in the actual um, input manager in Unity. Uh, it's just the input for pressing the horizontal keys. Uh, so A and D and then um, left and right and then obviously we can have vertical so float V axis is equal to input dot get axis raw vertical make sure you type this right then we need to calculate our movement like that we want to do like how much we want to do so I want to say vector free so this is a uh, how like where we want to move basically so movement is equal to new vector free and we want to say um, the h axis for the x, even if it's negative, it'll move us negative in the x, so it's right. Zero on the y, because the jumping handles our y and the gravity handles the y. And then v axis, like so. Now we want to times that by the speed um, that we've passed in. Obviously, we, we pass in the speed that we want. Um, and then times that by time dot fixed delta time. Uh, actually wait, oh no, we don't need to uh, do that because that is uh, handled for us in the fixed update, I think. I'm pretty sure that is, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, I think that is. Um, and then vector free, we want to calculate, so that's the movement from our current thing. We need to then uh, work out where we want to go to. So, because we're going to be using rigid body dot move position, which takes in a vector free and moves us there uh, with the rigid body system. So we'll say um, new position is equal to RB, the, the rigid body, its position, plus, and then um, what we want to do is, we want to move um, dependent on the way the rigid body is facing. Now, basically, if we don't do this next step, what will happen is, regardless of like where the um, person's rotated, forwards will always move them in the same direction. But in reality, you want to move forwards relative to where you're looking. So we'll say rb.transform dot transform direction and we'll pass in that movement. What it'll do is it'll convert it so it's the right uh, vector free dependent on where we're looking. So if we're looking, uh, if we spin the camera around, it'll still go forwards to wherever we're looking. Then we can say rb.move position, which is a function and it just takes in a position and puts us there. So new position. Okay. 
So get in our input, calculate like how far we want to move in a certain direction, um, calculate the new position and then move there, okay? So fingers crossed. Now obviously we don't have looking yet so we won't be able to rotate. But if I press play, let's just put this here. Give it a speed of two or something. Um, 1.1, okay. Now that's obviously very, very fast. Um, so let's go for one. 0.5. Mm, 0.1. <laughs> yeah, 0.3. Anyway, that's probably still too fast, but we'll see. So right now, if I press um, forwards, le uh, backwards, left, right, it works in all the directions. But um, yeah, it's still well too fast. Now one problem is... Uh, well, let, let's just test the rotation, right? So if I rotated the body on the Y and press forwards, it's going to go in that forward direction. So it's relative to where we're looking, you know? So I can spin around and go in that direction now. So we're going to set up character movement next lesson. This uh, this episode's dragged on a bit, but we've got the whole uh, jumping and looking around working. And obviously I'm going in depth exp uh, into in-depth explanations on how stuff works. So I hope you like this video. Um, let's just put that back. It's really high. I'll tweak some things about the player like movement numbers next video, but I hope you managed to get to where I am this video, and obviously feel free to try and go a bit further. Um, next video we're going to do character movement, uh, sorry, getting the camera on the player, rotating uh, when we move the mouse, looking in different directions, and then from then on we can add shooting and other stuff, so it's going to get fun. I uh, hope you like the series so far, uh, obviously leave video suggestions of what to cover. Uh, but apart from that, if you haven't already liked, subscribed, it would mean a lot. Join the Discord server in the description below. Apart from that, thanks for watching, and goodbye.